Are you voting with your values, but unknowingly investing against them? In today's episode, we'll uncover the importance of aligning your financial decisions with your Christian beliefs. Discover how you can vote and invest in harmony with your Christian faith. Let's get some perspective. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. We're so glad you joined us. My name is Sean Peters. This is Bob Barber. And today we have a very special program that Bob has put together that with Election Day coming up tomorrow, uh, if you are watching this on the day we published it, it's uh, hopefully a, a message that you guys will be able to uh, benefit from and, and listen to the whole thing or watch the whole thing. But this is something that we, we hope all Christians will take a stand on election day tomorrow and, and vote for pro-life and pro-family candidates. Absolutely, Sean. And I tell you, um, so today's program, we're calling it, you know, voting right, investing left or voting Christian and investing woke. You can, you can look at it several different ways, but, yeah. but um, hopefully during this election, all Christians will, you know, come forward and, and stand for truth. You know, truth is becoming so relative today and in today's culture we want to keep you from believing one way and investing another we want you yeah. to we want you to believe the christian way believe a biblical truth but at the same time also invest the same way and there's some great scriptures i think of i knew they were in james yep. and you know in james 1 8 is a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways so mm -hmm. as you vote i want you to think about truly if you're an investor, are you voting one way and investing another way? And mm -hmm. we're going to get into that, and we want to keep you from doing that because we don't want you to be a double-minded man. There's another scripture we, we didn't list on this one, but just came to mind about not being unequally yoked. Yeah. You know, when it, when it comes to investing, we'll, we'll definitely get into that. But the scripture tells us we should not be unequally yoked with a non-believer. And I would say that that applies with whether it's in, in business, you starting your own business or you're owning a small fraction of a share of a publicly traded company, whatever it might be, you don't want to align yourself when with someone that does not have the same values as you or has very little in common with you. So you know, another James, one is James yeah, 4.17. James 4.17. Go ahead, Sean. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. And 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 17 says, Come out and be separate. Uh, touch no unclean thing, and I will re receive you. So today we want to make sure that when you vote, you're not sending mixed signals. Yeah. As Christians, we don't want to vote one way and invest another. Right. That's that's not uh, not a good thing. And, and like Bob said, it's mixed signals. So, so I, I put together six or seven of these mm -hmm. things. I really looked at... You know, what are the reasons that we as Christians are voting today? And I, I know for myself, and I believe for many of you, you also, it's because you have convictions based on biblical guidelines, and you want to vote your value. That's so important, and, and also it's a duty to our country. Yep. And we want to have a voice, not only, you know, in, in the nation, but we want to have a voice in our city, our yes, state. That's right. And how our country are run. So it's important that we vote for good local leadership yeah. as well. I remember a very well-known pastor, he said, when you have a, a messed up city, it causes a messed up county. We have a messed up county, it causes a messed up state and so forth. That's so right. it starts at the grassroots level. It's kind of like we, we, we all get caught up in the presidential election, kind of like the Super Bowl or yeah, something. And yeah. It's like, remember, there, there are other games. There are, there are other things if you want right. to support your team. You need to make sure to, to get out there for more than just the, the final championship. We're voting to protect our God-given freedoms. It's very right. important, especially here in America. And for economic reasons like taxes and free enterprise. You know, free enterprise is a wonderful thing. It yeah. enables you to go out and start. Anyone can start their own business in anything. Yeah. And but we it, want to make sure to protect that right, right to be able to do that. Yes. To be able to, to have a chance to, to compete. Um, additionally, social issues. There's there's a lot of different social issues. Uh, we're not going to go into all of them, um, but there's a lot. And, you know, to change the status quo, because what we currently have is not working. 
<laughs> it is not. No. It definitely is not. So I think that's the reasons we need to understand as Christians why we are voting today. Plus, there's many others. I also think it's hard, um, not hard, important for Christians to understand that what liberals are voting for and that's what right. their agenda is. I think the number one agenda it seems to be is about abortion. Yep. Because I've been seeing all the advertisements. You know, we watch Wheel of Fortune every night, <laughs> and it's just one advertisement after another, and it's all about abortion. It doesn't well, seem like anything else. Not and just abortion, but it's it's the fact of wanting abortion for everyone, regardless of the reason, without any constraints. Yeah. You know, it doesn't any, matter how right. late in the term, doesn't matter. But there no no questions asked. Right. We're talking about you know, abortions eight and nine months. I mean, that's crazy. They just, they don't want any constraints on it. But another thing that we need to understand is that the liberals want a free reign for the LGBTQIA plus. I mean, keep just say LGBT the, plus. I yeah, no I know you can't keep track of all the letters, <laughs> but they want a free reign for that community to be able to indoctrinate our children and our grandchildren with their values, not Christian values, and, you and know those what, values Bob, really go against what we believe. And those organizations, where I'm not, I'm not going to name any, spe any specific ones, but yeah. you all know which. The, there's one big one. They they basically got uh, equal rights for the LG LG community, if you will. Like, okay, don't discriminate based on who someone decides to to love. Which we're not going to get into that, but like yeah, they, they basically right. they won. Okay, That's great, right. it's protected class. Well, you've got these organizations that have all this funding and all these people that have jobs that. Okay, well, what what else are we going to do now? So that's yeah. why they keep adding all these letters because they need to keep coming up with a supposed cause to champion and fight for, even though it's nonsense. And what you do is your own business. We're not we're not putting yeah. down. I mean, if whatever you want to do is your own business. But when it comes to indoctrinating our children with these values, right. we need to take a stand. Amen. And it also the liberal agenda is they want to put children's rights over parental rights, and we've yep. been hearing a lot about. We're that. seeing that happening in California with the and, the, with the sex change and right next door our neighbor canada same thing like they're and now that's kind of infecting uh, states like california and, and other places where the state controls and owns your chill our children versus not the parents. parents right a couple more things they want income to be equal for everyone except for them at the top politically <laughs> the government owes everyone more entitlements the federal government did you they, see that latest bob no uh, i didn't what one about one fifth of the benefits or, or, or income what well, about one fifth of income on average for for americans comes from government benefits now mm. one fifth that yeah. is up that is more uh doubled compared with what it was back in the 70s yep and it, this is a big one with me um that i just it, i don't like this one is they the, the liberals want federal control mm -hmm. over local control over state control and, and local control yeah. they really want to dictate mm -hmm. how states should run their business. Well, yeah, because California and New York want Texas and Florida and all, all these other states, they want them to fall in line with their their ideals. So if they get federal control, well, great, we're going to force everybody to do the same. And we know that ain't working over there. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting, too, how they want greater taxation on business. But you know what? Business is just going to pass this cost mm -hmm. on to the consumer. And so it's just going to cause more inflation. They want special rights for certain groups of people over equal rights for everyone. And they want minority rule over majority rule. So I think it's important that we Just understand trading one racism that they supposedly think yeah. is in place for another version of racism. <laughs> so I think it's important for us to understand as Christians that the the Christian conservative agenda is the polar opposite of the liberal agenda. And yet millions of Christians are voting with their convictions, which is fantastic. I want you to vote that way. But they're supporting these liberal agendas through their investment portfolios and retirement accounts. That's right. That's and they right. really don't know it. I, I don't know. I think it's from a lack of knowledge. Oh, yeah. But it's, it could be also conviction. Bob, over 30 years. And I mean, how many times do you still come across people that have just heard of how you can invest in this way yeah. or found out that it's, it's more accessible than ever. I mean, it, it's most commonly, it's not a matter of conviction. It's a matter of people just don't know it's available. So we're going to talk about that here That's in right. just a minute, because does it make any sense at all for Christians to vote with their convictions yet support liberal agendas with their investment and retirement accounts? Of course it doesn't. And the two main agendas that are on this ticket, as we know, mm -hmm. For the liberal agenda is abortion and the LGBTQ agenda. 
And millions of Christians are supporting these agendas, these woke agendas through their mutual funds, uh, ETFs, and even particular stocks they own because they're what they're, they own companies inside of these ETFs and these mutual funds mm -hmm. that are performing abortions or support the abortion industry, uh, pharmaceutical companies that could use fetal tissue research from aborted babies to do their research as well as uh, companies that are pushing, again, the LGBTQA agenda to minors and supporting liberal candidates. We're here to help you today to figure out, okay, I want to vote. If I'm going to vote conservatively for Christian principles, yeah. you can you can align how you invest in your IRAs and your mutual funds, your, um, uh, your, your brokerage accounts. You can align that with your uh with your right. values so one, one of the things that uh, i usually use as an example to to kind of wrap your head around the concept is well no, number one everything we have in our life our time talent treasure you know treasure money uh all of our assets everything we have it, it comes from god first and foremost so we don't really own any of it we are stewards of it so that's kind of like principle number one Okay, well, that's Psalms if, 24 1. Exactly. The earth is the Lord's and everything. And that's in it. right. So, with that understanding, as, as Christians, as, as believers and followers of Christ, we have a different level of responsibility. This is not just, oh, okay, are you making money? Are you increasing your assets? Are you preparing for retirement? But it's also, how are you getting to that end goal? Um, you know, there's the, the parable where the master goes away on a, on a trip and he comes back and the, you know, the two servants with different, you know, he gave to each according to their ability, but the first two, they did well, they doubled the amount that he gave them. And then the last one buried in the ground. But what, what I always think it would be interesting is, is if Jesus had added a couple more sentences to the story of what if, what did the master then ask how? You know, how did they gain it? And if one of the ones that he said, well done, said, well, I raped, pillaged, and stole, and, and destroyed neighboring towns, and, and took advantage of people to make this money, I highly doubt Jesus would have said of the master in the story that, oh, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Like, no, 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 that, that would be important too. And so yeah. think of it like this. If you're starting a business and you own it 100%, your sole proprietor, or however you set it up, and you don't want to give money to these abortion clinics and these causes, the, the LGBT plus uh, causes and indoctrination of our children. Okay. Well, what about if you were 51% owner and you, you brought on some partners? What if you were 5%? What if you were half a percent? At what point is the percentage okay for you to be an owner of a company, which is what it is when you own stocks or own stocks in mutual funds and ETFs that own those stocks underlying? It's the same thing. It's kind of like the uh, the whole poop in the brownie stories. You know, if somebody offers you brownies and they say, oh, there's a little bit of poop in there. Well, <laughs> yeah. how much poop is okay in the brownies for you to still eat them? Yeah. I think most people would say, now that I know there's poop in the brownies, I don't want to eat them. So it's kind of the same thing that that stewardship aspect of it's not about the money that's directly benefiting these areas because you bought these shares. It really comes down to it's a heart issue of if this belongs to the Lord and I'm not supposed to be unequally yoked, and I, I don't want to be an owner of something that is profiting or benefiting these things that directly contradict my faith in Christ, well, then why own it? So let's get into the anyway, solution. A little bit of a rabbit trail there, but hopefully yeah, that's helpful. The, the, so the solution is biblically responsible investing, which right. started with just a handful, five to seven financial advisors. I was one of them about 30 years ago. And now it's becoming a movement where conservative Christians who vote right can also invest right. Okay, yeah. you get that? Instead of voting right and investing woke, you can vote right and invest right. And this is called biblically responsible investing. And when I first got in the in the business 25, 30 years ago, gosh, there were only one or two choices. Today, there are so many choices, it's hard to name them all. You've got everything from small cap value to large cap growth to international and everything in between. You've mm -hmm. got lots of mutual funds to pick from, lots of ETFs to pick from, of course, and then you have the entire stock market to pick from and we have all the software that helps us to know what companies are up to yeah and and so that on this day of voting that you're voting if you've never heard of this we want to encourage you to learn more about biblically responsible investing because this That's is right. the good news is that 
you can both vote and invest in an alignment with your values as a believer in Christ. And I know we have a lot of clients of Christian financial advisors that listen to our podcast, watch our program. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> good news. Okay, good news. You're all investing right. You're investing with, with the way that you vote. Right. But there's still millions of Christians out there that are voting right and investing left or woke, as we call it. That's the big word. That's what all the kids are saying these yeah. days. People yeah. still, they call us, they say, now, I don't want to invest in anything woke. And I said, we haven't invested in anything woke in 30 years. So it's we, part we of- We were avoiding that before before it was a cool term. Yeah, exa- yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. I want to ask you, you know, if you're listening to this today- Help us get the word out about biblically responsible investing. It is time for those that vote with conservative Christian principles to align their investments. That's right. And we can send a message to Wall Street, and we have. I know, Sean, you went and opened up on Wall Street. Um, I, I was uh, there. I don't, wouldn't say I was did, up, but I was there for the, the bell ringing of the mo- most recent Inspire ETF, the, yeah, the which PTL. Is B-I-B-L? Uh, PTL, no, PTL. PTL, which praise is praise the Lord. The Lord. Okay, yeah. Uh, Robert Nestle, founder, uh, I love all his... I don't I don't know how many more funds he can open because how many more creative names he's, can he come he, up with? But, he's, got, he's, got, he's got WWJD and, yep. and B-I-B-L, which right. added E to it in your but Bible. But. The, the point of that, though, is... is uh, I don't know, Robert is, is an Inspire very, very outspoken with shareholder engagement. But we are seeing so many more opportunities opening up for for Christians for us to be able to invest in alignment with our values. And Wall Street's going to follow the money. If if there more and more of us want this type of investing, uh, we're seeing secular firms and broker dealers and and others that are like, oh, well, these Christ all these Christians seem to want this. Uh, okay, well, we'll we'll do this because those who aren't believers they don't really care that much about why we're doing it, you know, why we're following the Lord in this way and what the Bible says. But if they see there's some money to be made by doing it that way, they're going to follow the money. You know, Sean, I just got an email yesterday from Eventide that they just opened up their new ETF. That's right. So, you know, I finally got an ETF. <laughs> yep. And I want to mention Timothy Plan. They're one of the, fa- they're the founders of Biblically Responsible Investing, the Timothy Plan Mutual Funds. I'm very good friends with the founder and all of them that work over there. They're like one big family because they are. They all love Jesus. Yep. And uh, in, in closing, we want to really encourage you to stay strong and, and, and Invest for your your biblical values along with voting for your biblical values. Now, I want to say this in closing, okay? Yes. Because I was thinking about this. We've we've had a we've had a lot of phone calls. I had another one yesterday, and I want you to take heart in whoever wins this election. If it doesn't go the way we want, that God is still on His throne. That's okay? right. And I also want you to take heart also that uh, you know we're not to live our lives based on who is president, but that many politicians <laughs> yeah don't live in fear regardless of who's yeah. president or who who gets elected in in and, the different elections. And, and so. I've noticed over and over that politicians they just tell people many times what their itching ears want to hear knowing full well they cannot deliver on all those promises. I know that many of the ones I've heard, I'm like, there's no way. You know, like capital gain taxes on unrealized gains, that's not going to pass. I, it, <laughs> the it, it would been destroy de- our country. It, and, and what the Democratic, I mean, they have a lot of investments too, so they, exactly. wouldn't, they wouldn't do yeah. that. You know, but, but in the end times, people will believe these things because 2 Timothy the fourth chapter, third verse tells us this. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Yep. Kind of so, goes right with it, doesn't yep. it? So, so if you'd like to learn more about aligning how you invest with how you vote, give us a call or text us at 830-609-6986 or visit our website, christianfinancialadvisors.com. Thanks as always for joining us. God bless. Go out and vote and stay true to your values. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like this video. If you have questions, you can visit our website, call, text us, or comment below. See you next time.